Hawa, Hawa. Much love to the family, much love to the tribe. I hope everyone out there is doing well. I hope everyone out there is blessed. Man, um, let me just uh, start off by saying uh, thank you to the family, thank you to the tribe, thank you for all the love and, and appreciation y'all been showing me. Uh, I appreciate all the comments uh, uh, and all the support. And, uh, you know, real talk, real spill. I'm always going to try to do my best for the, for the tribe, for the nation, with the drop, you know. Brother um, King plugged me in the drop nation over a year ago. And, um, you know, I really do put forth the effort to make sure that uh, we get the skinny and no fat. <laughs> and do my homework, you know. Uh, if I've learned anything in the course of that year, uh, I learned this, that the uh, search for indigenous truth, man, is a personal experience. It's the hero's journey. And, um, but the drop, the drop is for the nation, man. So I, I want to say thank you to uh, Brother King for making sure that King off the drop got out to the people uh, and, and, and doing the and one on it, <laughs> you know. So I wasn't expecting that. That was, uh, um, that really took me by, took me back and took me by surprise, man. But just, again, just wanted to, say thank you, um, you know, I love the family, I love the tribe, and, uh, Rob Nation is, a is a, is a work that, uh, I believe in, and, uh, Rob Nation is also, uh, I think it's a, a righteous work, so, uh, that being said, uh, we're gonna get into it, uh, so, we, with everything going on, man, riding the wave, I actually had set up something totally different. I was digging on, and uh, but what, I, what with everything that's been, you know, everybody dropping a drop, <laughs> you know, I, I, I decided to change change up a little bit. And um, first and foremost, man. Uh, Let's get the, 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 the simple stuff out of the way. And, uh, you know, I, I always say that if the old information be true, then then it got to maintain that truth. So, let me just hit y'all up with a uh, quick backspin. And this quick backspin, man, is for all the hijacks out there, all the jam of Joneses. You know, and for anybody else that's out there that, you know, don't want to rock, don't want to vibe, and, and that's okay, uh, but, you know, when it comes down to Drop Nation, you know, I think that people forget, you know, uh, certain things, <laughs> which is, you know, not how uh, uh, they perceive us, but how, you know, we perceive ourselves, so, uh, let's just bring it back, boom, I'm gonna just let Brother King say it, uh, you know, when it comes down to this uh, Drop and Drop Nation, uh, Brother King, well, uh, what, what did you say? So we're gonna keep talking about Pastor John. We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. <sighs> we'll never stop. So what about Ankara? We'll never stop. Drop nation. Okay, okay, okay. So, so let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. Uh, what about what about talking about dragons? We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. We'll never stop. Drop nation. Uh, okay, so. Uh, what what about uh, uh Nagalis and, 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 and GMO? We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. Wow. We'll never stop. Oh wow. Okay, so the oh uh, well, well, let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this then. Uh uh, you know, uh, what what about that? You know, thoughts and 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 the uh, you know, that more temple science stuff. We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. Never stop. Drop nation. We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. We ain't gonna stop dropping that drop. We'll never stop. Drop nation. Oh wow. Swag frequency. <laughs> Alright, man. So uh let's get into it. So uh today what I wanna focus on is uh this right here. 
you know. Um, I want to delve back into the mind of a hijack. You know, we say that, you know, the hijack's never late. And, uh, you know, it got me to thinking, trying to use my dragonfly perspective, that uh, the reason why the hijack's never late is because the indigenous truth is always right on time. And uh, so we need to dig on it when we can dig on it. Now, this is kind of interesting to me. And this is why, and it's really why I kind of changed up how I was going to approach things, right? So, I really started to dig on the whole dragonfly perspective. And, you know, you look up, you know, dragon is to see clearly. And when you dig on it, man, it, 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 what... What it's actually saying, uh, at least the way I interpret it, in a lot of ways is to have total recall. Um, you know, a part of seeing clearly is, the, you know, the ability to actually, like, you know, remember, remember things in its proper place and context. So, just to kind of give us some foundation, we're going to do another quick backspan real quick. And uh, we're gonna face this, uh, this 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 thought thing straight up. So we're gonna go back. This video right here, man, uh, the alchemy of the remnant, man. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite videos. I didn't watch this video out of this two thousand plus, you know, views, man. I know I'm up. I probably watched this about twenty times. <laughs> but uh, let's dig on it and uh, and use our dragonfly perspective. <laughs> Hijack 
that looks like a dog, like a hound. Just saying, man. Just saying. We only talking dragons. The Thoth is running his ass off from the hounds of the bear. Remember that. And you know what? Let me, let me, my, while I'm thinking about it, let me do a more more uh, 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 truth in a fiction, right? Now I'm not gonna say no. You can you can drop me a comment or uh, 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 or what have you, right? Now you tell me who is this? Now in the search for indigenous truth, and they put it all up in your face, bone. Who, who, who is this? I'm just asking a question. The, the, it, it, isn't this particular character going after the dragon scroll? Just saying, we only talking about dragons, man. But, in any case, um, go back. Yeah. So let's, 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 let's go back and, and use our dragonfly perspective. And you see my dragon over here. My dragonfly is is really honed in on this emerald tablet business. And I think I came or stumbled upon something uh, on that with that, right? Now, go back. Go back into judgment. That's why they run for me. Right, judgment. So, Thoth can't go everywhere. His master can't go everywhere. If you were created with the energy above the firmament, above the bear, the most high has given you protection, your energy protection, and would not allow Thoth to go. So, you have to drop on Thoth with you. But when you try to do Thoth, Thoth has to drop on you. Try to them, they have to drop on you. And if you notice, if you try to meet them, they always have to drop on you. But when you want to, they want to be you. Ain't that amazing, right? We're supposed to be color, we're supposed to be Negro, we're supposed to be all these other things, right? But be Hebrew, you can't do that. That's, yeah. The fundamental teachings of ancient Africa, a nemesis of remembrance. Thought is her news. And her news is Mercury. Right? Mercury is her Wow. Is wow. Her. Are you ready? Let's flow with this. Be cozy. And let's uh, enjoy learning together. We have to go. Oh, yeah, dig on it. Y'all gotta get to that backspin because I'll sit here and watch the whole thing. And uh, y'all got to dig on it. But, you know, the, the, the principle behind it all, man, is, is he, he states wow. in his, a while, he states in his videos, don't get mindfucked by Thoth. And I think we've been mindfucked by Thoth in a very, very bad way. Um, now, and how does that relate back to this whole dragons and dragonfly perspective and this, that, and the other? Well, let me ask you a question. We're going to get into the what they call, uh, of the, I think the, the laws of power is what it's listed under. Or uh, we're going to get into these, what they call hermetic laws. Now, again, we're going to take this uh, dragonfly perspective and uh, really dig on this whole... Uh, law thing, right? Let's look at this law thing that they're talking about, you know? The dragonfly is going to check it out. We're going to see, okay, okay. So my dragonfly got a question. Which comes first? Thoth or the hermetical laws of Thoth? Yeah, people, we only talking the minds of a hijack. Right? So, because we're in search of indigenous truth, what do we know? Well, if it's a law, 
that means the law is uh, predate uh, 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 Thoth. And if it predates Thoth, then that law has to still what? Apply. So, since we're only getting this quote unquote law from Thoth, okay, then we need to, um, again, put on our rain boots. Now, in this particular, from this particular perspective, let's understand one thing. If you can recognize one thing, okay, you should inherently recognize the opposite. So, for example, <coughs> excuse me, if you recognize, man, it's, it's bright out here. It's, it's really bright outside. By you making that statement, you inherently know and recognize that what? When it's dark outside. So, let's, let's dig into this duality versus polarity. Because it's the duality part I really want to focus on. And that's what my dragonfly is telling me to focus on. Dig on it. Duality versus, uh, versus polarity. This is uh, S. Ali Myers. Before Malcolm X. Before Martin Luther King Jr. Sorry, y'all. Uh, Actually, Thurgood Marshall is a pretty interesting history. I want to dig on it. go get hijacked we have foundation we're going to be firm fixed and immovable and if you want to dig on what the brother's saying so that we can have an understanding and knowledge and understanding of, 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 of a thing then then cool you know, just don't get hijacked all right <laughs> don't know uh, if, if any of his length and contact is still up in operation because this video is from 2015 so I, I, I don't know I just don't know just give you guys a heads up with that
but back to what we're talking about in this video, duality versus polarity. And this is very important for this to have you view this thing a lot differently. Look at the word duality. Duality in the word, the first word is dual. Whenever you have a duel between two things, that is usually a fight. We say a boxing match is a duel. We say when people are dueling it out. You mean like dragon versus dragon? As in a dragon war? I don't know. Maybe you mean like, you know, a more versus more war. But, you know, I'm just digging on it right away. just said. Now, that's the law of polarity, meaning that you simply recognize, if you recognize one thing, you automatically recognize another. You can't help that. Okay? Now, that's what he says about duality. Remember, duality is combative. The same thing, they're just going opposite ends of the spectrum, and they understand that these different poles need each other. And duality is more of a combative, like, oh, black people against white people. Gays against straight, left wings against right wing. That's the dualistic mindset. When you look at it as polarity, do you know that the left wings needs to the right wing, black needs to white, left needs to right, cold needs to cold needs to hot. So it's more of a complementary thing where duality is more of a combative friction type of thing. So that's the basic premise wow. between the duality wow. versus polarity. All right, thank you, brother. I appreciate you for that drop on duality versus polarity. So, now, why do I bring this up? Because, again, trying to have a dragonfly perspective, man, I, 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 I sat down and I meditated on that thought process. We kind of had an aha moment. Now, uh, just the other, uh, in the other video, you know, I have rung up, you know, about the dollar, hawa, I have rung up the dollar bill. And I explain how this is, you know, this is a map, okay? Um, and, uh, uh, you know, when I was, you know, digging in on these two different seals, okay? Now, what, what cut my thought process was uh, the video uh, uh, that was on the na uh, uh, on Drop Nation there uh, that was dropped where you got the pure science priest, because he wasn't a scientist, he was a science priest. And he's telling you what the natives there say uh, uh, versus his interpretation of the data, right? And and and, uh, and it was it's the funniest. I thought this shit, I thought it was funny because here it is. You got the natives saying, "Yeah, man, um, these rocks were burned by dragon fire," and he's like, "Nah, these were these were done by volcano. This is volcanic gash," and, and, and then. Uh, you know, they like, yeah, we take shelter here. And he like, yeah, it has some type of sacred meaning. And they like, nah, because dragons fly around here. And, you know, and then they got the elemental uh, cross, elemental circle. And, and and he attributes that to, uh, you know, Cortez. I mean, it's a pure hijack one-on-one. Um, and, you know, but it, it but the video sparked a thought when uh, Brother King Rock had brought out that, uh, the image of the cross, right? And he said, you know, what do you see? What do you perceive? You know, when you see this. And it got me to thinking. You know, I was talking all about these seals and stuff like that. And so I, it made me go back and I looked at this and I said, you know, what do I see? Now, going back to just plain old Pictopaleo. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and if you haven't been digging on it, dig on it because it really... It's changed, at least for me, it's changed the way I'm framing my thoughts and see things. So, when I, when I look at this, and, you know, don't absorb any of the information, just shape, right? Then I realize I've seen this before. And I've seen this before, right here. 
And then I was like, well, if I rotate this to its side, and I've seen this before, we're, you know, we're, 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 what's, what's really going on? And then I thought about it, and, uh, and I said, okay, let's go back. It's the symbol holding the same truth as a symbol, right? So, again, law of duality. So, going back here, I said, well, let's apply the law of polarity and the law of duality to what this symbol is and what we're seeing here with these seals. And I stated how this represents the Western Empire, uh, the Western Hemisphere, excuse me, uh, and this is your feathered serpent. This is your dragon. And this represents the Eastern Empire, uh, e uh, the Eastern Hemisphere. And then this is where you have your, uh, uh, your pyramid, right? Well, if the law of duality be true, then I can extrapolate that, that anything that comes out of here, out of quote-unquote Egypt, is, you know, what they deem, even in the mystery schools, what? Egyptian magic, right? And that's what we say, we try to break in all the spells, right? So, then what's dragon magic? Because we're talking about polarity and duality being one. And, uh, again, applying that dragonfly perspective on things, Where's our dragon magic? And our dragon magic is in our ability to see clearly. Now, I put this together. And, uh, I hope y'all can dig on it. So what we're going to do here is this. We're going to put it up. I made these notes. Because then I started breaking down, well, what if we're the only ones that's looking at things the wrong way? Where, where's... What does the dragon magic say? If we have a uh, soft magic, right? He has the emerald tablets. So, on the side, can y'all see that okay? So, the dragon side, and then we have the uh, pyramid side, right? Now, we're going to go through this. And, and, and it's going to really bake your noodle, base my noodle trips me out, alright, so I start applying what we've gone over, what we know, using the law of duality, because according to uh, this dollar bill, they say that, according to this dollar bill, you know, the land is, uh, the two sides are one, let me go back, sorry about that, the two lands are one, well, on both these lands, what do we know? Well, how is it that you got two worlds coming from the same land? Remember, we were getting into the, uh, the drop about the royals. And who are these royals? Start asking that question. All right? Um, because you're representing the world on one land. So, it got me thinking, got my mind turning. So, what I did was... As I was going through a couple of you know, uh, uh, back spins and drops and stuff like that, I said, okay, let's take a step back. Dictionary, right? Get that dictionary out. American. Oh, I ain't can even type today. Now, using our dragonfly perspective, what do we know? Well, we know we don't call ourselves American. So, and we also know that this is what? This is a spell. So let's take a look at the spell. Using the law of duality. Now it states here that 
American is a native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper color races. Notice that both aboriginals and copper color and races are both plural. Found here by the Europeans. So we're going to apply the law of duality. That means that there were two. Because the only way you can make something plural is if there's more than, more than one. Okay? Now, when the European came here, it was now applied to the descendant of the Europeans born here in America. So now the dynamic is what? When we use the law of duality. Black, what they call black versus white. Negro, you know, you, you, all, all the copper color races are now Negro under the umbrella of Negro. And they are, uh, they are set uh, against white people in the law of duality. But before the European got here, the law of duality had to apply to who? The copper color races. So, all right. So what? I, so I'm like, all right. Well, if that be true, then you know who are the uh, uh, why? Who are the two in this law of duality? And it goes back to what? This right here. So over here, what do we have? The ten lost tribes. We know that. Ten lost tribes, right? So we have the ten lost tribes, and in the ten lost, and there's more than one race. Who are these guys? Wow. Uh, now, when you put an Arkham Razor to who are the ten lost tribes, right? You're only talking about the sons of Abraham. Sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Esau, and Ishmael, the sons of Abraham. But who are the other races? Well, obviously the other, other races, who did Abraham have as a handmaid? Look, look at this story of Abraham. Before he was Abraham, well, uh, he was uh, uh, Abram. He was what? Abram or Abraham means pinion, right? Feather. He's the original OG, OG dragon. He's the, <laughs> you know, he's the triple OG feather serpent. And who did he get with? He had his wife Sarah, or Sarai at that time. And she had who? And he also had Hagar. Hagar who? The Egyptian. But when we dig on Philo, we come to learn find out that in Alexandria, in Egypt, there's only Hebrews and Greeks. But when we do our indigenous truth, who are the Greeks? Well, the Greeks are the Edomites. Right? And then, if the Greeks are the Edomites, and then we look at it, we then you got these Egyptians, right? So, I hope I'm making sense here. Um, the, 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 the other, we're trying to figure out who, who is this other, other group. And from what I can tell, the the other groups are the sons of Ham, the sons of Zeus, sons of Isus, sons of this Greek Savior, or Jesus Christ. Because remember, when we were talking about the uh, why the first commandment is, he ushered the Creator, the Most High, or you worship this pantheon of gods. And you were talking about in the context of time frame where there's only two groups in the law of duality, two groups. And polarity, very similar, but they're they're different. Clashing. Eh. And when you when you dig on it, what are you actually reading about? And it's all about what? The land. Abraham had land rights. Then Joseph got land rights. I mean, even Joseph says uh, I think it was when uh, when Jake, Jacob died. He like go to Egypt and get. The, we got the records in Egypt. Go get it. And then you think about it. As big as Egypt is, and where they were supposedly at, you know, they got there and back from Egypt in less than a day. So that lets me know that their flight of travel was a little bit quick. You know, also, <laughs> you know, what I mean? I'm just saying we only talking about dragons. So again, so that so. What I started thinking was here is well, when we know that this is uh, the, the we know that this is Egypt, right? And uh, we know Egypt is here, and we know that we're here, 
and then we got this type of uh, symbolism. And so I said, well, could that be true? Well, yeah, we got this thought Hegelian dialect. We got this magic plan. And then, and then when you rotate this image on it sideways, you start to see something else comes up, or at least another another symbol should come to mind. And that other symbol is what we call what? Tree of Life. Now, I was digging on this. Remember, this is Hermes. So I was digging on this, and I was like, okay, well, where does this image, just looking at symbolism, Pictopaleo, where does this image, where does this image fit? Here. And from what I can dig on, it looks like right here. Remember, the two circles are combined to be one. And just to, just to dig on it, this one here is actually a, a, a tree of life Kabbalah tree uh, from uh, Dr. Phil. Right? Dr. Phil Valentine. And then we got the other one here. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, no. Done with that. Where is it? The other one. This one. So if you want to, you know, dig on it in a slightly different manner, you can dig on it. But apparently, this is that 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 box that we're talking about, right? Who is there? Who is there? Sun God here in their box? You know what I'm saying? Isn't that Heru? Isn't that Horus? Isn't that your Jesus? You see what I'm saying? I mean, when you look at again, you look at the histories and stuff. It's all about this uh this, this hijack that is that relate. Right, so, any case, uh, so I, I I thought about it, and then I said, okay, well, when Miss D broke down the, you know, and, and gave us that that track con, you know, she was absolutely right about it, and as I was trying to use a dragonfly perspective, I said, well, wait a minute, we got too many connections going on. Let me just kind of break this all down, and this is where I got my notes. Now. Just to back up what Ms. D what Ms. D has said, when you do your digging, what you get? Well, the C gets modified to a G in 250 BC. This is we got that from Philo trying to you know do our search for indigenous truth. Uh, and, and we did our homework on the etymology of C uh, of the letter G. Um, the letter G was created uh, because the Septuagint was created. And the letter G represents the kappa in Greek. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the kappa and something else, but the G represents the kappa. So when you're translating it down into English, you can replace the C with either a G or a K because the K represents in English also represents the kappa, right? So you can, and, and what do our comedic uh, brothers say? They say that they're not, they're not conscious, right? They say that they're conscious and they don't even put the h in it they just usually put the, you know change it to a k so if that be true you're using the law of duality well and if i'm correct in my thought process and my theory that we're talking about the sons of ham versus the sons of abraham okay then that means we conscious right but since they can change it and it applies to them that they can change it to a k then we can change it to a k but so if they're con conscious K O N, then then we are conscious K H A N, right? Now what are we talking about? Now we're talking about Egypt. Well, out of Egypt, you have the Magi, the Magic Scion. Y'all think I'm just making that up? Well, again, we go back to the etymology uh, 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 of ghetto. Again, it's all wordplay. Egito. Okay? Egyptus. All they're doing is putting the M in front of it. Okay? But, you know, Magito, and then you have, and, and this is a, a very, uh, um, what do you call it, a variation or uh, from that same family tree. And then I looked up, uh, and just to see how much, you know, if I was tripping or not. I actually looked up Scion, right? So I'm like, I know Scion's a word, but is it one, you know, am I tripping? So I looked up the definition of Scion. 
Scion, a young shoot or twig of a plant. Okay. Especially one cut for grafting or rooting. Now check this out. A descendant wow. of a notable family. Can y'all see that? I want to make sure y'all can see that. I hope y'all can see that clearly. A scion. So, now, let's go back. So, they are Egyptian scions. So, magic scions, right? Magician. Magic scion. Magician. So, if that be true for them, wow. a wad, law duality and polarity, then we have a then we are conscience, American science. Okay? They tell you to do what? Use your third eye. So back to the symbolism. Remember, and this is all and, and it's all and it does have everything to do with the Hegelian dialect. Because we're only talking about symbols, pictopaleo. Let's go back. Third eye. We're supposed to do the whole Dragonfly perspective. Right? Now, in in all symbolism, right? Now, I know I told you guys everything is backwards because of uh, the plate, but on the dollar bill, it represents real, real spiel. The feathered serpent, the dragon, his perspective is looking at the all seeing eyes, checking out what he's doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dodge the hijack, right? I mean, this it, is trippy. It, it, it just it, it keeps going. Let's check it out. Bring it back up. So, what do you call? You know, what do you call them? They are called masons. Ma magicians, magic scions are what? Masons. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when then what we have? Well, we have American science. Real spiel. Firm, fixed, and immovable. Observable, repeatable, right? All those words relate to what? The dragonfly perspective. Okay? What do we have over here? They are what? Afri cons. Afri or Afra, right? And we are what? Afro cons. They, on the map, they have the what? Reverse seal because they flip everything around. And we have what? The present seal. Today, right now. In, 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 lot, in real time. In real time. Present. Not living in the past. They have the Eastern Hemisphere. We have the Western Hemisphere. They believe in Admiralty Law. Well, we got Ecclesiastical. And that's that example is, is is clearly shown in the ex, in the Exodus between Moses and Pharaoh. Moses Pharaoh has two serpents, two rods that gets devoured by Moses's one rod, one law. The two laws, three degrees of law. There's only three. Two degrees of law is held by who? Pharaoh, common law, and Admiralty law. And through that illusion, he uses, he uses that to create an illusion that he actually has what? Ecclesiastical law. But it's in, not until Moses give him the drop that he don't have ecclesiastical law that he what? Perform, it's, time to do, it's time to exit. And he asks to by law, under common in, in, in the treaties, you know, hey, let us bounce. So we should be able to bounce. Now, what else do you have? When we break down this duality, because again, we're talking duality and polarity. And if, it, and, and if law comes before Thoth, then that means the law has to apply to Thoth, right? And his spells. So we're going to use our dragon magic to decipher and break these uh, Egyptian spells. Because it seems to me everything is an Egyptian spell versus our dragon spells. And we don't even realize we got dragon magic, but we just figured out that we actually got dragons. So, you know, keep it rolling. So then what do we have here? They call it what? A Mexim. And what do we call it? America. We know what, what else do we know? They, they have the Mississippi, the Nile of the East. We checked out the map. That is the Nile of the East. And what do we have in in in, in, in Utah and Judah? 
We have the I Am Red. We have the Colorado. The Now of the West. And you can keep doing this all day long. All day long. And uh, and I was just just really blown away and, and, and amazed that uh, uh, when you try to use a, 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 a dragonfly perspective, on, on what we've been digging on, and that dragonfly perspective is looking at things through the lens of total recall, and let's just bring up all the drop, and let's start going to the source uh, of the matter. Yeah, a lot of truth gets revealed. So I hope y'all like this uh, um, application of, of of trying to use a dragonfly perspective. I hope it's concise and clear. Um, Again, much love to the family, much love to the tribe, and uh, yeah, let's continue to dig on this dragonfly perspective, man, because it seems to be that there's only, um, our, 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 our main enemy is, is this Thoth, because he, he, Thoth 101, Hijack 101, because that's the train that's never late, but you know, indigenous truth is uh, always on time, is it, you know, Thoth only moves because indigenous truth tells him to be there. Can you dig it? That's that Joe, baby. So, again, love y'all. Peace.